What is up guys, Joe Snow right here. Today we're discussing about the iOS 10.1.1 jailbreak that is now finally supporting the iPhone SE. And we're going to also talk about the um, UK utilities, why you should not install it, why you should not install OpenSSH for the moment, and what's happening, why there is no, um, there is no new beta of the yellow jailbreak for the moment. So let's start with what we need first. And I'm going to start about the iOS 10.1.1 or 10.1 jailbreak for iPhone SE. Finally, there is a support update for the iPhone SE. And as you can see from here, I'm going to link this Reddit page down below in the description for you to get it. You can get now the iPhone SE running Tempo 1 or Tempo 1.1 that is running a Samsung on a Samsung chip to be jailbroken. How you know if you're running TSMC or Samsung chip? Well, it's pretty simple right here. You know, whoever made this post made it very good. You have a comparison chart and you can download a battery memory system status monitor from the App Store. Yeah, this is the actual name of the application. Tap on system and you will see whether your device ID number is this one or this one right here. So the TSMC variant is not supported for the moment and it has this number. The uh, Samsung chip iPhone SE has this one. You see this little uh, U right here the A9 processor. So this is how you identify it. And those are the final compatible devices for the moment. Do not worry if your device is not in here for the moment, like the iPhone 6 or, I don't know, 5S. They will be added at some point, but they're not priority for the moment, unfortunately. So you can uh, jailbreak the iPhone 7, 7 Plus, 6S, 6S Plus, iPad Pro and SE for the moment from Tempo 1 to Tempo 1.1, which is kind of great. Unfortunately, there is no support for 10.0.3, sorry, 10.0.2, 10.0.1, and so on. But anyways, this is how you install it. I already made a tutorial on how to use the IPA. If you're on a Windows PC, go ahead in here and you have this uh, video right here. It's linked in the description down below on how to install the IPA. And if you go right here on the website, you need to download this one from here. It's updated, it's the beta 3, and uh, do not get the beta 4 because it's broken, it doesn't work, and it might create problems. Okay, now that we uh, made it clear, there is also a list of tweaks that work or doesn't work or weren't tested for you to have an idea on what work and what doesn't. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, there is a list of tweaks in here. Um, yeah, so haven't been tested, may not even be need anymore, gives an error, and so on. Those who work are in here, those who doesn't are, of course, uh, in the brackets. So, um, now speaking about uh, the betas, why there is no gamma? You probably see that in the gamma, he planned to add, where is that thing? Oh yeah, planet feature for the next release, gamma. He planned to add more devices, fix a couple of things and so on. Why there is no gamma for the moment? Well, there have been a couple of issues. Uh, between this guy right here, iJapija00 and Luca Tedesco. Uh, if you don't know who iJapija00 is, he had a YouTube channel, very small YouTube channel, where he demoed a couple of iOS 10.x jailbreaks that nobody thinks are real because he didn't prove with any releases that they are real and he came from nowhere and he actually made the Yuka utilities, Yuka Stasher, available for um, download in Cydia and that little substrate enabler, Cydia substrate enabler, we talked about it and we talked about the fact that you should not work with that thing, you should not enable it in this video when we talked about jailbreak being safe or not. So if you don't know about this video or you haven't seen it yet, Go ahead, it's important. So what's the problem between these guys? What's making um, Luca Tedesco not really? So at first we need to take a little bit, a couple of the, of the uh, threads of his conversations in order to understand. So the first thing in here he posted, there is a pretty serious bug in all Yalu betas that I'd like to fix before adding more support. This is the first reason why he's not adding more support to the devices. And then, the reason why uh, he included drop beer, an alternative SSH daemon, is that uh, OpenSSH seems broken on iOS 10. So the first thing you need to do, go ahead and remove OpenSSH if you have it installed. Also, 
you should avoid Yuka Utilities. And this is where all the problems start with um, iJapija, the creator of the Yuka Utilities. And look at the disco. Why you should do this? Well, in this conversation, I'm going to link it in the description down below if you want to follow it to understand the bigger picture of the situation. He, um, well, IJP just said that Luca is actually trashing me, to quote him right here, Luca is actually trashing me ever since I released that substrate fix, basically telling that everything I do is shit. I can personally say that both my substrate enabler in Yuka Stasher is 110% safe on whatever device you use, but I guess people do whatever Luca says just because he released a beta jailbreak. And somebody said it works 100% until you try to use CDI Razor. So yes, guys, if you use any of that things, Yuka Utilities or um, uh, his substrate enabler, do not use CDI Razor. It will kill your device. And you will end up running iOS 10.2. Happiness. And then, of course, look at the Desco um, replayed to this thread at some point in, in here. And of course, a lot of arguing and a lot of things. You can, you can read through all of them. But to get a bigger picture of all these things, it's not safe to use UK Utilities. That guy that posted the, the um, mobile substrate fix shouldn't have posted that. Because in the end, that everything that uh, substrate fix made was to fool people into trying this jailbreak, even though they're not... Um, the developers and so on, and people thought it's safe because he made, this guy made you think it's safe to install that thing. And now if look at the Desco actually publishes a new beta or a new gamma release, it will of course start to have problems with the uh, tweaks you installed with Yuka Utilities because Yuka Utilities contains and enables OpenSSH for some reason and so on. And of course, if your device gets broken, who you're going to blame? Look at Tedesco. He made a broken beta, you're going to say. Of course, not. you're not going to uh, blame this guy right here for publishing a fake substrate enabler, because that it is. It works to enable substrate, but it doesn't enable the substrate correctly, because the jailbreak itself simply doesn't work correctly in order to let the device respring normally and start the demons normally, only, only giving you a fake idea of a substrate that works. In the end, it only creates problems, and we talked about that in the video. So, to all this mess, Sorik, the creator of Cydia, tuned in and had, uh, probably he tried to start a uh, novel or something, because I don't understand why he, he wrote a lot, but he actually did a pretty good job. I will also link this thing in here because you need to read it. He made his points very very clear why you should not install it and why everybody is now um, on hold. Because look at the Desco said something that is a little bit bad but I kind of understand him. Let me try to find that thing. Uh, full disclosure, right. Full disclosure, I just Jap whatever zero zero's actions made me way less willing to complete Yalu. So what he tries to say in here is that he is a little bit skeptical if he should complete the Yalu jailbreak because due to this guy who released the Stasher and the Yuka utilities, now everybody has or almost everybody has a bad configuration on their devices with tweaks and other things that might break the device when another beta is released. So what you can do to fix your device, at first read Sorik's um, explanations in here. I know it's a little bit long, but it's pretty good and you should read it to understand the picture. And if you have Yuka utilities, remove them. If you have OpenSSH, remove them. And if you're running any of iJapija, whatever's uh, tweak for fixing the mobile substrate, for the God's sake, remove that thing and keep your jailbreak clean. This is a jailbreak for developers, we talked about it. If you want to be able ever again to jailbreak, just get rid of that things for your good. Now, of course, iJapija already has his fans to say that, that of course start bashing, look at the Desco. So there are two factions at the moment. Try to be in the faction that supports the Desco, because this guy right here doesn't really give me any kind of hope he will release a jailbreak ever, and he doesn't really seem to be knowing what he's talking about. He claims that he has his own iOS 10.2.1 jailbreak, but he's not willing to release it, 
but for a guy that claims to have a jailbreak, he doesn't really know some basic things. And even Sorik had problems with this guy in the past, uh, when uh, he started to, I don't know, bash Sorik for a couple of things. So try to avoid getting any advice from this guy right here, ijpja00. Try to stay with your jailbreak clean and do not install any tweaks that might jeopardize your chance to jailbreak. It might be your last chance to jailbreak. So this is basically it, guys. Do not forget if you want to jailbreak your iPhone SE, finally. The link is in the description down below if you want to follow up the conversation threads uh, to understand the bigger picture of the situation. Go ahead, the links are in the description. And subscribe to stay updated. Peace out.